through the course of my life, I've had interests in lots of other areas as well as music. So, for example, at one point, I was really into martial arts. I've dabbled in taekwondo and jiu-jitsu. Taekwondo being the main one, I competed for Great Britain when I was 20 for a bit and then decided it's not for me anymore. Now I'm a really, really passionate yoga enthusiast and want to be a yoga teacher on the side. But the one thing that has carried on throughout school, throughout university until now is music. It's my biggest passion. To me, music is emotion and creativity. Music can enhance any situation you're in, whether it be taking a shower, doing the washing up, going for a nice walk in the sunshine. Music makes everything better. I think I was around 13 years old when I first heard the bass clarinet. It was in my tiny school orchestra, which consisted of two flutes, a couple of trumpets, two clarinets, including me and an oboist, and I think a couple of guitars as well in our orchestra. The other clarinetist was a few years older than me, and he decided to rent a bass clarinet just for the term, just for something a bit different. We weren't doing any symphonic rep, so it didn't really need it, but it was just something a bit fun at the time. So in my town, there wasn't really much music. It was a very small town in Somerset in England. There were no youth music groups or community orchestras for me to join. So the school orchestra was all I had, and I wasn't that inspired with the clarinet at the time because there wasn't really a whole lot for me to do on it. So piano was my main passion. So if you'd have asked me when I was 16, what do you want to do when you're older? I would say be a concert pianist because I was obsessed with the pianist Lang Lang and I was obsessed with the Debussy's piano music. That was what I would do every night when I came home from school was to spend an hour playing Claire de Lune and other Debussy music quite obsessively. So when I first heard the bass clarinet, I thought, this is quite fun. But then I didn't think about it again for a few years. And it was only when I was around 17 when I joined an amateur local orchestra for mostly sort of 40 to 60 year old adults. That was when I heard it again, but used in a proper orchestral context. I befriended the only other young person there and the bass clarinetist happened to be his auntie. And they saw that I was a bit disinterested in music and playing the clarinet at the time. So they asked me to join a clarinet quartet and we used to go and do a few concerts locally. And of course, she was playing bass clarinet in this quartet. And I was always thinking, oh, I really, really want to try it out. And one day she let me try it and I've never looked back. As soon as I tried it, I thought, yep, this is for me. And I went and rented one from a local music shop, which luckily they had a few in stock. So I had a really good one. <laughs> before there wasn't much music in my school or my town I was the only one in my school who took A-level music so this these are the exams you do before you go to university and at the end of each year you have a prize giving ceremony for all the people who are leaving the school and as I was the only musician in my year I got asked to do a couple of little performances throughout the course of an evening ceremony and my first ever performance on bass clarinet was doing the second movement of the Mozart clarinet concerto on bass clarinet in front of about 200 people being accompanied by my A-level music teacher. I have no idea how well it went, <laughs> but I just remember being absolutely terrified because it was something completely new. And I think at the time I was playing it with a neck strap, but just sort of like a saxophone neck strap. It wasn't particularly supportive. And I remember being very hunched over and having a very painful shoulder at the time. So it couldn't have been that brilliant. <laughs> So my career is still very early on. I graduated my master's degree from Trinity Lab and Conservatoire of Music and Dance in summer of 2020, although it really finished as soon as the pandemic started. <laughs> I studied with Paolo Di Gaspari and I spent so much time exploring some really, really cool bass clarinet repertoire. So I'm very, very happy I had that experience. But the main thing that has stuck out to me from the last couple of years is just the sense of community you get online. Like, I never thought I would be talking to people from Peru or Argentina or Japan or Australia. 
Um, but all these people are now in regular contact with me and I've got supporters from all over the world and I've collaborated with you. I've worked with you. I've made friends with you. Like some people I've made friends with online who live in the States have now moved over here and now they're my friends in real life. And I just didn't know that community existed. So that's been a, an incredibly memorable part of the last couple of years. But if I think back to before the pandemic started, <laughs> a long time ago now it feels like, but in 2018, I was still studying at the University of Southampton for my undergraduate degree. And Snarky Puppies Grammy Award winning pianist, Bill Lawrence, did a solo show in Southampton as part of his European tour that year. And I got to play bass clarinet in the orchestra for the gig. It was amazing. It was so much fun. He was such a lovely musician to work with. That's super memorable. And another thing that happened a year later, so 2019, was going to the European Clarinet Festival held in Italy. That was so much fun. There were a nice group of us from my college who all went over and we were just accepted into this group of amazing musicians. Everyone was so friendly, so supportive and just having a glass of wine with this clarinetist that you've followed online for years who's so nice that's just incredibly memorable so if any of those events happen again in the near future I definitely recommend you to just go and speak to as many people as possible because you'll find out that musicians are generally lovely <laughs> by far the hardest question to answer. I was incredibly lucky that I had a supportive family, friends, and when I went to university, I had an incredibly supportive bass clarinet specialist teacher there who opened my mind to what the capabilities of the bass clarinet were. You know, I went to university wanting to be a bass clarinet specialist and I had no idea about any of the repertoire or what that really meant. So she showed me all of this. And the thing that inspired me and continues to inspire me is watching other people play, playing with other people and continuously discovering new music to play. So constantly be on the search for new repertoire and that keeps your brain ticking over. So you don't stagnate and you don't get bored. So whenever I feel a bit unmotivated, thinking, oh, I don't want to practice today or I'm not quite feeling it. I'll just go on YouTube and I get stuck in this rabbit hole of different music and new repertoire and then I get inspired again. So you've got to keep creative, keep thinking outside the box. So the biggest thing that I'm proud of that I've done is arranging Debussy's cello sonata for bass clarinet. So my teacher, Helen Paskins, from my undergrad degree, she arranged syrinx for bass clarinet and ever since then I've just been obsessed with that piece most recitals I do I think I include that piece in there because I think it's just beautiful and I love Debussy's music as I mentioned previously I used to be a bit obsessed with it so to be able to steal this cello sonata and make it work really well on bass clarinet has been the proudest thing I think I've done to help the bass clarinet community by giving you some more nice melodic romantic repertoire that really works really well um, so think outside the box. There's no one path for a bass clarinetist. So you've got to stay true to yourself and do what feels right for you. I hope that helps you. <laughs>